Welcome back. You're watching Between the Lines. I'm your host, Samuel Thomas. Our guest today, Jack Blanco, the author of The Clear Word, has also authored another book, Four Gospels, One Story, The Savior. And it's moving the four Gospels together in an easy-to-read context, and it's something I've also read. I was reading it on a plane in travel uh, one day. Jack, you know, the Lord has blessed you. He's gifted you to be able to take the Bible and, and put it in a way that so many people appreciate. And so you've expanded from the clear word and now gone to this book. Well, the important thing in our all of our lives is to advance God's kingdom, isn't it? It is. As I, you know, we're not here just to breathe air and eat food. <laughs> but we're here to advance God's kingdom. And so if this touches the hearts and lives of people and draws them close to the Savior, that's what it's all about. In fact, after I completed a clear word, then some parents talked to me and said, uh, oh, why don't you write one for kids, for the children? And I said, what do you do with all the genealogies? No, they said, you don't have to, you know, uh, use every name. You just pick out names that the kids are familiar with. I said, well, let me think about that. So I prayed about it and I was convicted. Well, let's start from scratch. And so, you know, I started from scratch, writing it out. And then what I would do is I would combine verses. So it would say verses 5-13. Okay? And there are certain portions in the Bible that are a little uh, repetitive. And so, yes, you kind of uh, shrink it just a little bit. And so you get the thoughts together, so everything is there. And so it's, you know, uh, verses, say, 5 to 7 or whatever. So after, you know, a number of years, yeah, we finished the clear word. And then, <laughs> and then I was impressed to take the four Gospels and put them together. But the purpose of the four Gospels is a, for a different audience. Today we're talking about... Uh, what they call postmodern thinking. Yes. They're more interested in narratives. Yes. So uh, what I did is I took the four Gospels and put them into one story. Um, there, you know, uh, that was challenging because uh, uh, what Luke says, for example, uh, is he says it just a little different than what Matthew says and how to get all that s synchronized. That was a challenge. But it's written for the uh, postmodern uh, adult and even young person. They're interested in narratives, so they can just sit down and read the story. Well, I gave my copy away. You did. You know, I did. <laughs> when I was getting off the plane, somebody asked me what I was reading. And it's and it's it's a, a non-threatening. It's it is very non-threatening. You know, and I just sure. in fact the person was behind me, and I just you know reached behind me and said, "Here, you you can have this." And they they were enthralled. You know, they they, okay. they just thought it was a wonderful well, thing. I you know I I don't know if people realize that you have a generous heart, because a lot of copies of Clear Word have been sold, and the Clear Word of course, with a lot of copies sold, people would immediately try to do some quick, you know, mathematics or calculations and say, well, Jack has generated a little revenue off of this. But in fact, you are investing in the lives of other people through the clear word. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, all the royalties for the clear word, the children's clear word and so on, they all go to ministerial scholarships. And uh, I, that is my love offering to Jesus, Amen. what he's done for me. Yes. No, uh, Jack Blanco is not getting rich on this yet. <laughs> sowing the seed, sowing yeah. the seed for a great harvest. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Now, when were you convicted about that? Uh, while you were writing it or when, once you reached you know, the I really, I really don't know. I guess probably when it was printed and talk about royalties and contracts. And I said, no, no way. You know, I'm grateful what the Lord has done for me. Samuel, that's what our life ought to be motivated by is gratitude. Yes, yeah, service. You know, that, it, it, it's, not, it's not to gain uh, brownie points, so to speak, with the Lord or whatever, you know. Um, no, it is gratitude for what he has done for us and will continue to do for us. That's what gives you the joy. Sure. Well, in, 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 one sense, in one sense, it's done. Yeah. Paid and I, it is finished. 
Praise the Lord. Now we're on our way. You know, while I have you here, I've got to ask you this question. Sure. What are some of your favorite stories, your favorite um, well, accounts I, in the Bible? Sammy, before I get into that, I should say that I also finished writing a harmony of Acts and Epistles, which is in the process of being printed. Okay? And so, so that'll, instead, that'll of reading, be out instead of reading Acts and then reading the Epistles, okay, the book of Acts is, is the background through it all. And you, the Epistles come in at certain points in the book of Acts. Okay? And, uh, you know, that's what our young people like these days is action. We are tired of talking about this or that or whatever. Let's go do it. <laughs> I look forward to that one. <laughs> you know? that, that one sounds exciting. And so, uh, yes, action. You know, well, I guess it fits together with the book of Acts. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> action. So what are some of your favorite stories? Some of my favorite stories? In the Bible. Oh, you, got, you got 66 Samuel, books that, to, that is to work from. Really? Yeah. I mean, because there, I tell you why. Because there are so many lessons uh, in, uh, in, in all the stories, whether it is um, uh, David's life, whether it is Daniel's life, whether it is uh, Peter's life, because you can apply it to your own life, you know, and it helps you. And so um, it's hard for me to say which is my favorite. I like them all <laughs> because, because they're so helpful. Well, Doc, there's got to be one that grabs you. Well, I tell you, maybe I should, rather than favorite, let's, uh, let me respond this way, if I may. Um, the um, experience of Peter. Peter was so self-confident. And, you know, as we work for the Lord and as the Lord blesses us, very gradually, sometimes imperceptibly, we gain spiritual self-confidence. And that spiritual self-confidence has to be shattered, okay? And, uh, yeah, so sometimes the Lord uh, permits certain things to happen. Now, the Lord said to Peter, I have prayed for you. Yes. But nevertheless, he didn't interfere with uh, Peter's free will and with Peter's uh, uh, self-assurance and Peter pulling out his sword and all that, you know? No. But then he said, no, put away your sword, okay? That's not how the kingdom of God comes. It comes by love, not by sword. And then, of course, Peter denies him. We know the story. Peter denies him. And then he goes out and weeps. And I had an experience like that in my life when I was a missionary. In, in, uh, we were missionaries first in Africa and then in the Far East, uh, where all of a sudden you come to the, spiritual, to the realization that spiritually... Yes, you are working for yourself. You know, you are the great hero that defends Jesus Christ. And then you realize, oh, and something may happen in a person's life, but God allows it to happen to wake us up. You know, when I went to, uh, you know, to college and to the seminary and I was a young pastor and so on. You know, I had a lot of confidence in God, a lot of confidence that was more confidence in me than confidence in God, maybe. <laughs> Whatever. You know, I want to tell you, Samuel, straight out, I have no confidence in myself anymore. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Okay? And to put it very more, more succinctly, I don't trust myself. You see, faith is not a faith in my ability to hold on to God, but faith is faith in His ability to hold on to me. Yes. That's what it's all about. See, uh, I can give you a favorite text. Please. You ask me something favorite, I'll Please. give you a favorite text. Please. You know, Philippians 1, 6. Be confident of this very thing, that He who has begun a good work in you. Yes. He will perform it until the day yes. of Jesus Christ. So the focus is not on self, even our spiritual growth and spiritual self. The focus is on Him. It's all about Him, not about us. 